of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is in people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, the Father, glory to God in the highest. And on earth is to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth is to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, this is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise you. May God bless us 
And may all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoptions as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son then, also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thank according to Luke. Glory to you, O God. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Gospel of the Lord. While the rest of the world is taking down their Christmas trees and putting their lights back up and throwing away all the garbage from Christmas, we Catholics continue to celebrate um, for another week, actually. We have a Christmas season. Uh, we don't just celebrate Christmas one day and then forget about it. We have actually eight days that we celebrate, a uh, different feast in those eight days, but we call that the octave of Christmas. And today's the last day in the octave of Christmas. And January 1st is always the solemnity of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God. And it's good that we are all here today to give her honor uh, for saying yes to the Father. Mary is, in very many ways, the new Eve. Through Eve, and Adam's fall, we lost our inheritance. 
our inheritance was eternal life in the Trinity. But because of sin, we forfeited that inheritance and we lost it. But that did not detour God in any way. In fact, he continued with his plan to bring salvation to the world. In the first reading, we have one of the first glimpses into the Trinitarian mystery. And this is one of the things that we have to recognize when we talk about Mary, is that everything we believe about her, the honor that we give to her, is based in the bedrock of what we believe about Jesus Christ and who Jesus is. And so today, we have in the first reading the first blessing that gives us a hint of the Trinitarian mystery. The Lord bless you. The Lord let his face shine on you. The Lord look upon you kindly. It's a threefold blessing. And the church continues this way of giving blessings. Today we'll have the solemn blessing for this feast. And solemn blessings are usually in three parts because they recognize the Trinitarian mystery. But what's most important with regard to the Trinity today and this celebration is that Jesus Christ is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. It's what the late Pope Benedict XVI uh, called the great scandal or the big problem with faith in Jesus. That one single human being who was executed in Palestine around the year 30 is the center of the universe and of history. And because he is mighty God and Prince of Peace, because he is the center of the universe and of history, nothing was created without him. We know that Mary is to be honored as his mother because she didn't give birth to a human nature. She gave birth to a person and the person she gave birth to in time is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. And so that's why we give her the title Mother of God. She's not the mother of the Trinitarian mystery, of course not, but she is the mother of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is God, and therefore she is the mother of God. And this was all part of God's plan. Even though Adam and Eve fell, it didn't deter God, as I said earlier, from his plan uh, to become actually one of us. And in Paul's letter to the Galatians, he reminds us that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman born under the law, to ransom those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. In other words, he comes to us as man in order to restore the inheritance we lost from Adam and Eve. He restores our inheritance, which is eternal life in the Trinity. And we live in that life even now through what we call sanctifying grace. The grace we receive through all of the sacraments, the grace that God gives us is called sanctifying grace. And what sanctifying grace is, is the life of God within you and within me. It's the life of the Trinity within us. And that's why the sacraments are so important. That's why the sacramental life of the church is so important and necessary, because we need that life within us. 
And as proof that we are sons, in other words, male or female, we are sons in the eyes of God, we are the inheritors, God sent the Spirit of His Son, the Holy Spirit, into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Today is a beautiful day to not only recognize Mary as the mother of God, but to recognize through this scripture that God is our daddy. God is our Abba, our Father. He loves us infinitely. He loves us tenderly. He loves us so much that he sent his son into the world while we were still sinners. And in the human nature that he took from Mary, he saved us. He saved us and restored the promise, restored the inheritance. So we have great joy today in celebrating Mary, the mother of God, because we are no longer slaves. We are sons and daughters of the Father. And if we are sons and daughters of the Father, then we are also heirs of the promises. The gospel today from Luke, we learn that the shepherds who were perhaps back then among the poorest of the poor were the first to receive the message that Jesus Christ had been born. Angels appeared to them and they ran in haste afterwards to find Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem. And they gave Mary and Joseph the story that the angels had expressed to them. We don't have everything that the angels said to the shepherds written down, so we don't know precisely what it was. But we know that they were told about who this child is. And all who heard it were amazed, including his mother, Mary. And Mary kept all of those words from the shepherds in her heart. And the shepherds returned, the gospel says, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Mary ponders. Mary meditates. She contemplates. She is a deep and powerful intercessor for us. And so we cannot forget her. She is the mother of the Lord. So let us continue to celebrate Christmas. Let us continue to pray for our beloved Pope Benedict XVI, who passed away yesterday. Let us continue to spread the joy of the gospel to everyone we meet. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. True God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and the Lord was with the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of our Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Mary, we present our needs through Jesus, the Prince of Peace. 
that God's holy church grow in unity, holiness, and in love for Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear that the leaders of nations work to end war and establish lasting peace, especially in the Middle East. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that legislators and representatives promote and defend respect for life in all people, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that orphans, especially young children, be nurtured and healed by loving foster parents and guardians. Let us pray to the Lord. That this community be a place of welcome and solace where those who are lost can find their home, way home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick, that they find healing through God's compassion and enjoy comfort and health in body and spirit. We pray especially for Liz Daniel Ortiz, Sister Frances Voss, Robert Sherrod, Maria Tran, Carmen Marzilano, Marzilano Marianne Kitchener, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, may they experience God's heavenly peace, and may they dwell in the house of the Lord forever, praying especially for Rene Francisco and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear. And we pray for the intentions of this Mass, for all the souls of all the aborted babies. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you sent the word to renew your creation. Help us renew the face of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sing of Mary. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light. Jesus Christ our Lord, through him the angels praise you in majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Gerald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of Christ, especially all the souls of the unborn and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you shall enter my mercy. Lord, you say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. We have a brief announcement from our bishop. This message is from the Most Reverend Gerald Barbarito, Bishop of Palm Beach. We join with the Universal Church in fervent prayer for the repose of the soul of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. We likewise give earnest thanks to God for the gift of the Pope Emeritus, who generously blessed all the faithful with his holiness, wisdom, and apostolic courage in the years of service to the church as a priest, bishop, and as its chief shepherd. He leaves a living legacy for all of us. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, will preside over the funeral mass for Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI on Thursday, January 5th in St. Peter's Square. I ask that prayers be offered at every mass in all of our parishes on that day. I will also offer special Mass for Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI on January 5th at noon at St. Ignatius Cathedral, Palm Beach Gardens, to which all the faithful are welcome to attend. May Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI join all the saints in God's kingdom, which he served in such an extraordinary manner. And our announcements... St. Joseph's Chapel will be open this week from Tuesday through Thursday. Our Holy Hour and Teze prayer service will be held on Wednesday at 7 here in the church. Please join us for prayer. The parish office will be closed tomorrow, January 2nd, and will reopen on Tuesday. And the Chapel of Divine Mercy will be, reci- will be recited today at 2.30 here in the church. Our pastor, Father Dukas, and Father Max, myself, we wish you a very merry continuation of the Christmas season and a very blessed and happy new year. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant you prayers in this and in every and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day.
Oh